بارك الله فيك الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما All praise is due to Allah we praise him we worship him we seek his assistance we seek his tawfiq we pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us and we pray to him to give us the tawfiq to apply it فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Tonight is the night of the fourth of شهر الله المحرم for the year 1440 since هجرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Yes, a new year 1440 which translates into September the 14th of the Gregorian calendar 2018 I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this night a blessed night all the brothers and sisters who are with us physically in this masjid or who might be tuning in live to make them mubarakin blessed in themselves and in their families and this is a majlis ilm surrounded by the angels May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower us with his mercy Amen. and may Allah make our ja'iza, our reward when we are done here that it will be said to us, you go for you have been forgiven. Allahumma ameen. Amen. Uh, seeking knowledge is one of the great qurubat that you can do to b draw closer to Allah azza wa jal. And what a better uh, uh, thing to spend and invest your time in on a Friday night after a long working day where the heart of the son of Adam gets solid, gets tough from the busy schedule and from the matters of life and the matters that make the person heedless and they distract you from remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. These majalis have the effect of uh, making this heart more conscious of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, learning about some of the beneficial knowledge that we hope will help us live our life according to what pleases Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala who created us. For and the knowledge is for the practice. Al ilm lil amal, as we always say. Al ilm lil amal. We learn not for the luxury of learning first. Uh, for, uh, 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 only f uh, to, to, to get the pleasure or the, le the leisure of uh, knowing, knowing, but rather to apply it and do according to it. Um, I apologize for the little delay because of the technology, uh, but uh, I just wanted to, I didn't want to miss the opportunity if you allow me in two, three minutes, inshallah, or so. Um, I wanted to remind myself first and foremost and you brothers and sisters, we just started a new year. And with it, a new chapter of our life is starting. We just turned over a page and we started a new page. We closed a chapter and we started a new chapter. First and foremost, we, we uh, praise Allah Azza wa Jal for extending our life, for keeping us alive, so uh, to, be, uh, to get another opportunity to do good um, and uh, erase the bad deeds that we may have uh, done and we all do. Um, we should actually, with the start of this year, we should have a stronger determination. We should have an intention and pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the tawfiq 
And when we say pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the tawfiq, it means that He makes it easy for us. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it easy for you to do an increase of the good deeds. This is a new year. Make a determination that I want to do a, be a better Muslim, do better than last year, and ask Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness for any sins or shortcomings that you may have committed. We all did. Also being in Shahr Allah al-Muharram, this is an, a great opportunity to do the good deeds, to do the fasting as much as you can during the month of Shawwal, I'm sorry, during the month of uh, Muharram. For Rasulullah said the best fasting after the month of Ramadan is the fasting during the month of Muharram. So do as much as you can. As a matter of fact, the more you can fast, the better. And if you cannot fast that much for whatever reason, at a minimum, you should definitely make sure that you fast on Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, and a day before it or a day after it, or both, a day before or a day after. So the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th, that is the best fasting or the level of fasting of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, if you actually uh, fast a day before it or after it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq in this new year to be more obedient to be better Muslim and uh, give us the tawfiq to do better and better and better and draw closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make our uh, ending a good ending and a happy ending. I don't want to take more time. I uh, just wanted to give a quick reminder for myself and yourself. With that said, قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى الحديث العاشر عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبا وإن الله أمر المؤمنين بما أمر به المرسلين فقال تعالى يا أيها الرسل كلوا من الطيبات واعملوا صالحا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم واشكروا لله ثم ذكر الرجل يطيل السفر أشعث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يقول يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب له رواه مسلم the literal translation of this hadith is uh, on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu who said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah the Almighty is good and accepts only that which is good. Tayyib. Um, and verily Allah has commanded the believers to do that which he has commanded the messengers alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Um, so the, the Almighty has said, O oh, you messengers, eat of the tayyibat and do righteous deeds. And the Almighty has said, O oh, you, oh, who you believe, eat of the lawful things that we have provided you with. Then he alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned the case of a man who have journeyed far, is disheveled and dusty, and who spreads out his hands to the sky saying, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, while his food is haram, and his drink is haram, and his clothing is haram, and he has been nourished with haram, so how can he, meaning his supplication, be answered? It was related by an Imam Muslim. Now this is another great hadith, and for those who have not attended be with us before, um, we actually have this series on the second Friday of every month. Once, in a once a month, on the second Friday of every month. And we've, we've been going through this series uh, or this collection, this great collection of al-Ahadith known as al-Ahadith al-Nawawiyah, the 40 Hadith Nawawi. And they are 42 Hadith, the most comprehensive Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as you can see, we are actually in the 10th Hadith in this series, the 10th Hadith of this great collection. Um, this is another great example of a comprehensive hadith, which is also sets a principle, a great principle of this deen of Islam, and a lot of rulings are based on this hadith. Now, before I, want, I, before I go into this hadith, I wanted to actually start, up, start off with a question. You guys always ask me, 
hopefully I get it, I get to ask you one question. In the very previous hadith, we learned about the actual name of Abu Huraira. Now Abu Huraira, I'm, I'm pretty sure every, literally every Muslim have heard of him, right? Radiallahu an, one of the great Sahaba, one of the great narrators, the frequent narrators of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is famously known or more famously known as Abu Huraira, but this is a kunya. This is his kunya. Like you say Abu Abdullah, Abu Abdul Rahman, etc., etc. What is his actual name? We learned it in the in, in the exactly previous hadith. Abdul Rahman Ahsant Ibn. If you answer correctly, I'll give you two cookies. How is that? <laughs> you get an extra cookie. No, I'm just kidding. You can take as many as you want. Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. Ahsant, barakallahu feek, radiyallahu an. Brother, the reason I mention this, yani, some people may think like, how important is that? I can tell you, it's very important. It saddens me when a lot of us and a lot of our kids, they know the names of all those celebrities, of those sport celebrities, of you know, the, pres the names of the US presidents, of this, of that, and we can name them, but we cannot remember the name of one of the great Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Isn't that shameful? Isn't that a great uh, shortcoming? Wallahi, we ought to do better than that. And we can do better than that. And we should do better than that. Yani at a minimum, this is a great Sahabi. One of the, at a minimum, one of his rights upon us is to be able to remember his name. How hard is that? How hard is that? So the brother Barakallah he helped us with the first name. But how, how hard is it to remember that Abu Huraira's name is Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr? How hard is that? It's not. So these are the best of humanity after the prophets. The best of the son of Adam after the prophets and the messengers, alayhim is sahabat Rasulullah sallallahu Can't we remember their names? Allahu Akbar. How is that? So this is why, you know, I typically try to, uh, uh, as much as possible, kind of, you know, stop and kind of try to refresh our memory in the hope that we remember them. You should actually take this and, um, you know, quiz or teach your kids and your wives and your families. What is the name of Abu Huraira? Make sure, for example, you know, obviously this is one of the Sahaba, but the Sahabas are so many. So you have to actually teach them. Um, at a minimum, we should remember their names and, and remember their rights upon this Ummah. Type. With that said, this is a hadith, as we're going to see, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guides the ummah. As a matter of fact, he orders the ummah to eat exclusively from that which is tayyib. To eat only from that which is tayyib. And he, this hadith tells us that eating from that which is tayyib is the quality of al-mursaleen alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his anbiya, the messengers and the prophets, only eat or only ate from that which is tayyib. So it is one of their qualities, one of their attributes, alayhim salam. And it is also the quality of the believers in those prophets. Al-mu'mineen bil-rusul. Those who believe in the rusul, meaning believe in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, also from their qualities is that they eat only from that which is tayyib. And this hadith also tells us or, or connects the dots, the effect of eating from that which is tayyib upon our deeds and upon our ibadat and how eating from only that which is tayyib and halal has a great impact and has a great effect on the amal, on the deeds and on the suluk of the person and upon his dua or her dua and the relationship with the acceptance of Allah Azza wa Jal of the deeds and of the dua of one's, of the person uh, related to where, whether they eat from that which is tayyib and halal. His saying alayhi salatu was salam, inna allaha tayyib. He started by saying, inna allaha tayyib. Allah is good. Allah Almighty is good. What does it mean, tayyib? What is tayyib? What is the meaning of tayyib? When, 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 the, when the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, inna allaha tayyib, what does it mean? 
it means that Allah Azza wa Jal is exalted from any defect or imperfection. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal is free from any imperfection or from any defect. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, Allah Azza wa Jal munazzah. So we call this tanzih. When you say subhanallah, subhanallah, what does, what does the meaning, by the way? A lot of people, they don't know. They, they repeated it a thousand times, but they don't know what it actually means. When you say tasbih, when you say subhanallah, what is the meaning of that? A tasbih is a tanzih. Yani when you say subhanallah, you are freeing Allah Azza wa Jal. You are saying that Allah Azza wa Jal is exalted, munazzah, exalted from any defect, from a naqais, and from any imperfection, from al ayub Allah Azza wa Jal is free from that. So Allah Azza wa Jal himself, in his essence, is free from any defect and imperfection. His speech, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is tayyib, is free from any defect and from any imperfection. And all his deeds, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all his attributes, and all his names are perfect. They are free from any defect or any imperfection. And there is nothing evil about Allah Azza wa Jal. There is nothing evil about Allah Azza wa Jal. There is nothing even about his deeds. There is nothing evil about his speech or about his qadar, about uh, decree of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, even if we see it otherwise. So Allah Azza wa Jal, all, if, uh, all of his uh, deeds, subhanahu wa Ta'ala, are deeds of good and wisdom, and there is nothing evil in them. This is what we mean, this is what it means to say, in Allah Tayyib. So Allah Azza wa Jal, as a result of that, of being Tayyib, Everything that relates to him, his names, his attributes, his essence, everything is tayyib, meaning that is perfect and complete, and there is nothing, any, there is no defect or any imperfection about it. As a result of that, then he is the only one who deserves worship. Because he is perfect and because he is complete and there is nothing imperfect about him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the only one. As a result of that, he is the only one who deserves to be worshipped, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone with no partners. And he is the one who is worthy that the person submits his face and his heart and his intention to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is the one who is perfect and complete. By the way, this word tayyib, or actually, let me delay this a little bit. Then he said, in Allah tayyib, likewise, la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. He accepts only that which is good. La yaqbalu illa tayyiba. What is the meaning of la yaqbal? Does not accept. Does not accept. It means that he does not like it, he disapproves of it, he, does, he dislikes it, and may not reward for it. لا يقبل, this term, appears quite often in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see this term, لا يقبل, لا يقبل, إن الله لا يقبل. It actually appears quite often in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it can come in three different meanings. It can come to mean that لا يقبل العمل, Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept the deed يعني in itself to begin with is invalid. So we, saw, we say it is not mujzi. This amal is not mujzi. It's not sufficient. So somebody who prayed and we say that, for, we'll see some example, that his prayer is not accepted, it means that it is invalid to begin with. It's worthless. He, he or she needs to repeat it. So this is one, so it is a revocation or invalidation of the, of the deed itself to begin with. Or it can come to mean that Allah Azza wa Jal will not reward for it. لا يقبل, يعني it is sufficient to meet the criteria, but Allah Azza wa Jal will not reward for it. Or it can come and means that Allah Azza wa Jal is displeased with this deed, which typically means that Allah Azza wa Jal will not reward for it.
which means that Allah Azza wa Jal will not reward for it. Let's take a few examples of what I mean. Because always by the example it becomes clear, right? The example clarify the meaning. In the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is in Sahih Al-Imam Muslim, he alayhi salatu wasalam said, Man ata arrafan fasa'alahu an shay lam tuqbal lah. Hence, la yaqbal, lam tuqbal lahu salatu arba'ina layla. He who visits a diviner, those who claim, and it's a claim, they're lying, those who claim that they know the unseen. They'll be able to tell you what's going to happen, you know, who you'll get married, and what job you're going to get. They claim all of this. They have no knowledge of that. It's all lies. These are called arraf, or diviner. He who visits a diviner and asks him about anything, his prayers extending to 40 nights will not be accepted. Does that mean that they're, even if they pray, then their prayer is invalid or that they don't have to pray for 40 days because it's not accepted? Is that the meaning of this hadith? No. They still have to pray. There is no excuse from prayer. So even if somebody goes to a diviner and asks them, now notice, even if you don't believe them, because believing them, that's another matter even more serious. But if somebody just goes without believing them, just to ask them, Rasulullah is saying that his prayer or her prayer will not be accepted for 40 nights. It means that they still have to pray and their prayer is sufficient for to meet the farad because, you know, we have five prayers that we must pray. But they will not be rewarded for it. They will not be, Allah will not re reward them as a, a punishment for visiting and asking a diviner. So this is an example of where la, la yaqbal it means that he will not reward for it. So they will pray, but they will not get the reward for it. Another example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and this is the hadith sahih, he said, لا يقبل الله, لا يقبل الله صلاة حائض إلا بخمار. Allah does not accept the prayer of a woman who has reached puberty unless she wears a veil, she covers up. Which la yaqbal, which does not accept me, which meaning is it? It means that the, the deed is invalid to begin with. Because a woman who reaches the age of puberty, for the prayer to be accepted, she must cover up. She must wear the hijab. Without the hijab, which is a condition of the prayer, then the prayer is not accepted. Allah will not accept it. La yaqbal. So this goes to the to the validity of the word itself so it's invalid she has to repeat it if she does that another example rasulullah says in the hadith which is in sahih al-bukhari and sahih muslim he said la yaqbal allah huh, notice la yaqbal la yaqbal allah salata ahadikum idha ahdatha hatta yatawadda allah does not accept the prayer of any one of you if he does hadath which is like passing wind or you know relieving themselves in the restroom Allah Azza wa Jal will not accept the prayer of any one of you if he does hadath, which means, you know, he invalidates his pu purity, uh, tahara, until he performs wudu, until he renews the wudu, because passing gas or undoing the, you know, the tahara needs re refreshing or redoing the tahara. So in here, la yaqbal means that the, the deed itself is invalid, is unacceptable. Without, so this means that this is a condition, one of the conditions of this deed, of which is the prayer. So you see that la yaqbal comes in multiple meanings. It can mean that the, the work itself is not accepted altogether because it's invalid. It could mean that it is valid, yet Allah Azza wa Jal does not reward for it. That's the second meaning. The third one, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal is displeased with the deed, which like I said, in most cases, in all cases, most cases, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal also does not, when he is displeased with the deed, he does not reward for it. So these typically go together. Type. So we have three different cases. In his saying, alayhi salatu wasalam, inna allaha tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. He is, uh, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala tayyib, does not accept but that which is tayyib, yani from the deeds, that except that which is tayyib, it could actually mean one of the three things. The, that the, the deed itself has to be tayyib, free from any uh, defect that could invalidate it. it. It also means that 
uh, it is something that Allah Azza wa Jal will reward for it, something that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with it. When we say that Allah Azza wa Jal accept a deed, we can actually say that it means all of them. It means that this, when Allah Azza wa Jal accept a deed, it means that it is sufficient. When Allah Azza wa Jal accept your prayer, it means that you, it is sufficient and you don't have to repeat it. It's valid prayer. It means that Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you for it. And it means that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with you and with your deed as you did it. All of this. Other than a tayyib, this hadith tells us that Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept. Why? Because he, he alayhi salatu was salam said, لا يقبل إلا طيب. Does not accept, except that which is طيب. When you make an exception after a negation in the Arabic language, it means that this is only, this is, that, this, this is restriction. It is a restriction to only that. You notice he said لا يقبل, that's a negation. Allah does not accept. Except إلا which is an exception. Except which is طيب, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal, in other words, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal will only accept that which is طيب. And other than الطيب, Allah will not accept it. So that's why we need to actually be mindful of this hadith and how important it is. Don't we want our deeds to be accepted and rewarded and be pleased with by Allah Azza wa Jal? We all want that. So this is why we should actually take care and make sure that our deeds, all of our deeds are tayyib because this is what Allah Azza wa Jal only accept. When we say al-amal la yaqbalu illa tayyibah, this deed that we are describing as tayyib, what is the meaning of al-amal in here? Is it only the actions? No, it is more than that. When we say al-amal al-tayyib, it includes the speech, because this is a part of our amal, and the actions, and the convictions, al-i'tiqad. So Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept, except the, the good speeches and good words, the good deeds, and the good convictions, i'tiqadat. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal will accept. When we say a deed that which is tayyib, what does that mean? We said Allah Azza wa Jal is tayyib, meaning that he is free from any defect, any, in, any imperfection. When we say amal tayyib, or al qawl al tayyib, or al i'tiqad al tayyib, what does, it, what does that mean? It means likewise, that which is free from any defects or any imperfection. When does the speech become free of any defect and imperfection? when it is conformant to the sharia and what we are allowed to say. So backbiting is not a, uh, is not a speech that is tayyib. Doing a good or saying the good words and the good things that are approved by the sharia is a good speech. Likewise deeds. If you actually hurt somebody or you steal or you betray, all of these are not good deeds because they are against the sharia. As a matter of fact, they fly in the face of the sharia. When they are, when they conform to what the Sharia ah says and what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from us and is pleased with, then this is when we say this is Amal Tayyib. Al I'tiqad al Tayyib is what is evidenced in the book and the Sunnah of the Prophet. What Allah Azza wa Jal told us we should believe in and we should hold as a, an I'tiqad. Yani it comes according to what Allah Azza wa Jal and His Prophet والسلام, says. Anything against the Sharia. Ah, is not tayyib. And anything according to the sharia, ah, deed, speech, i'tiqad, it is tayyib. What is the opposite of tayyib? Khabith. Al khabith and al tayyib. The opposite of al tayyib is al khabith, which is that which is against the sharia ah, or is a disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned the both, the two opposites in the ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah. قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِي الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبْ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ Say, يعني يا Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, not equal. They're not equal. As a matter of fact, they're the very opposite of one another. They are not equal or not equal are al-khabith and al tayyib even though the abundance of al khabith although there are a lot of khaba'ith, there are a lot of you know evil things out there and they are abundant even more so today 
even though the abundance of al-khabith may please you, they are still bad. And what is accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal is al-tayyib. So this, what is the summary that I should take away from this portion of the hadith? What is the summary of this? What should I take home today and tonight and for the rest of my life? Is that I should be care very careful. I should strive as much as possible to actually achieve only that which is tayyib in my words, in my deeds, in my atiqad, everything uh, so that I become tayyib in myself. When my speech is tayyib, when my deeds are tayyib, and when my atiqad is tayyib, what I believe in, then I become myself tayyib. Every Muslim becomes in themselves tayyib. And a tayyib, what is the reward for a tayyibun? Dar al tayyibin, paradise. A tayyibun, a dar al tayyibin is for those who are tayyib. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al Nahl, Alladina tatawafahum al malaikatu tayyibin yakulun salamun alaykum, udhul al jannah. May Allah make us among them. Those who live, those whose lives the angel take away while they are in a pious state, saying to them, Salamun alaykum, peace be upon you, enter you, enter you paradise because of the good which you used to do. Why? Because they are tayyibin. They are tayyibin. So their reward is dar tayyibin, the place of those who are tayyibin. Those who have some khabaith, some khubth in them. For example, you know, some misdeeds, some sins, some shortcomings, some maybe even, you know, some deeds that Allah Azza wa Jal does not, uh, chooses not to forgive them, chooses not to forgive them for these deeds, then what happens? Then they, because they are not tayyib, fully tayyib, they are, they have some khabaith, some khabith in them, then they need to be purified from this al khubith and that purification is done by the fire and hellfire. May Allah protect me and you and your families and my family until they are purified and they become tayyib, free from any khubth, and then they are admitted into paradise because what is only admitted into dar al tayyibin is only that which is tayyib. Only those who are tayyibun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me and you among them. When we learn this, or when we know this, now that we know this, what are we supposed to do, brothers and sisters? Every Muslim who is mindful and conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal, conscious of the Dar al Akhirah, when you know that only those who are Tayyibin are admitted into Jannah, and if there is something, and if there is any Khubith that is mixed in it, and Allah Azza wa Jal chooses or wills not to forgive, then there is some serious conse consequences to that. Then, the, so what I should actually do, this is actually a severe and serious warning for every Muslim. Then I should strive and make sure that every saying that I say, I am tayyib in my speeches, in my deeds, in my atiqad, and I should strive to actually do according and say according and, and, and believe according to the sharia. Ah, and I, try, I should try to clean myself and cr clear myself of any disobedience, any khubth, so that I am pure and I deserve by the will of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to be admitted into Jannah, Dar al tayyibin What I wanted to uh, say about al tayyib some of those who know me may have noticed that I use this word quite often. When I see somebody, right, when I greet them, I say, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Tayyib? Kif halak? Tayyib? Right? What does that mean? Now you know, you should know actually now. And this is, by the way, commonly used, in, especially in the Gulf area. I don't come from the Gulf area, but this is quite, quite often. Uh, brother, used to you, you live over there, right? It's, it's very common. Kif halak, tayyib? Naam. So what, do, what does it mean? What do they mean by that? How are you? Are you tayyib? Yani, are you free from any imperfection, from any defect? Yani, hopefully you're not sick, you are healthy, uh, you are wealthy, you are all in a good shape. There's nothing that, you know, there's no defect in, 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 in your body or in, in your health or otherwise. This is what it means. Tayyib, yani you're all good from every aspect. This is what it means. Now you know what it means. The greatest defect, now we're speaking of defect of the deeds, right? There are many types of defects that can come and invalidate or partially invalidate the deeds or affect the deed. What is the single greatest defect that can come and affect the deed? To actually want from that deed somebody other than Allah Azza wa Jal. 
somebody does a deed or says something and he wants this dunya or she wants this dunya from it, not the face of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala or al dar al-akhirah. Or doing the deed altogether for somebody else other than Allah Azza wa Jal to, to earn fame or to get recognition or to get some benefit. This is from the most serious defect that can come into the deed that could invalidate or forfeit the reward from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So we say in Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu tayyiba, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal is good. He only accepts that which is good from the speeches, from the deeds, from al atiqad that it that conforms to the Sharia and wanted from it, what was wanted from it is Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and His reward and al Dar al Akhirah. After that, he alayhi salatu wa salam said. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And verily Allah has commanded the believers to do that which He has commanded the messengers. Yani He ordered the believers with the same orders or like He did to the messengers عليهم الصلاة والسلام. This is actually an interesting statement in this hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the benefit of it which may not be very clear that this statement from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is actually a praise and an encouragement to the believers like me and you. Why? Because if somebody tells you that I am ordering you or I am asking of you that which I ask somebody who is higher than you, more honorable in state than you, doesn't this actually is a praise as an encouragement because now I am receiving the same orders as the prophets and the messengers. When you hear that, it's a praise that I'm receiving the same orders. Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing me with the same thing that he addressed his prophets and messengers who are the best of the creation of the son of Adam. And it's encouragement. He, they were ordered with this and they did that. And so I am ordering you as well like, like them. It's an encouragement. Like I ordered them, I am ordering you. So I get encouraged because I'm, I should be doing like the messengers and the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam. And even more, this is actually in honoring of us, the believers, that we are ordered with the same thing that the messengers and the prophets were ordered with. That's a great encouragement and a great uh, honor from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. What did Allah azza wa jal order the messengers with? And the prophets, he said, Ya ayyuhar rusulu kulu min al tayyibati wa amalu saliha. Ya ayyuhar rusulu kulu min al tayyibati wa amalu saliha. O oh, you messengers, eat of al tayyibat. Notice, this is one example of a deed, eating. He said, Eat from al tayyibat and do righteous deeds. And he ordered the believers with the ayah of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Now this is an address to the believers Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum Washkuru lillah uh, All who you believe Eat from the lawful things that we have provided You with and be grateful to Allah I don't have it in here I guess I missed it Washkuru lillah Be grateful to Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala So he ordered the believers to eat from only that which is tayyib, from al tayyibat, like he ordered al mursaleen alayhim salam to eat from that which is tayyib. Ya ayyuhal rusulu kulu min al tayyibat. That's an order from Allah Azza wa Jal to eat only from that which is tayyibat. Then he subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered all al mursaleen and al mu'mineen to do good. Wa'amalu saliha. To do, to do good. He ordered all of them. Tayyib. This shows us the strong relationship between eating from that which is tayyib and doing good. And the effect of eating exclusively from only that which is tayyib, the effect of that on doing the good deeds, because there is a strong connection between the two. Like he subhanahu wa ta'ala said in, in the previous ayah, he made the connection between Ya ayyuhal rusulu kulu min al-tayyibati wa'amalu saliha. Why? Because there is an impact, there is a great effect of eating from that which is tayyib upon doing, upon doing the, the good deeds. That is why actually a lot of our righteous predecessors and from the scholars, the people of knowledge, they said that the deed is not 
accepted or is not righteous unless it is coming from a person who eats from that which is tayyib. SubhanAllah, look at the strong connection and Rasulullah is gonna even give us a great example of that. So salah is not accepted from a person and it is not a righteous salah unless the person is wearing garment that is tayyib and he is tayyib in his body and in his you know f physical and he is clear from any khaba'ith there is no imperfection there is no impurity on his body or in his garments right and in a place that is tayyib free from any impurity and any khaba'ith only then that the prayer is tayyib and accepted by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala if somebody has impurity on his body then the, pr the prayer is not accepted likewise is zakah somebody giving zakah from his money it will not be accepted by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and that zakah is not tayyibah unless it is coming from money that was earned in a lawful way it, the money is tayyib and the person is giving it from a good intention yani he's not being forced into it but rather giving it with a good intention from himself and he's happy about it and he doesn't want fame from it or nor no recognition nor something worldly in return this is when it is accepted likewise al hajj is not accepted unless it is uh, done with the money that was earned in a legal way and that the person wants the face of Allah Azza wa Jal and wants Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala from it. This is what it means, Tayyib. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then gave us an example. An example, and the examples are too many, but he gave us an example because teaching by example is one of the great ways of teaching and to, so that people understand. So he gave us, he, he, this is teaching by example. You all know uh, young people, right? Today that they recognize this is one of the most effective way of teaching. Teaching by example. Rasulullah did that 1400 years ago. Teaching by example. So he gave us, and so he's giving us, in, uh, giving us an example here. And he said, this is one of the example of the effect that eating from that which is tayyib has upon the good, about, upon the uh, deeds to make them tayyib and salih and righteous. And the effect of actually eating from that which is unlawful, or haram, upon that, uh, the, upon the uh, validity and the righteousness of the deeds. طيب. Abu Huraira said after that, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, then he, let me choose another color, then he said, ثم ذكر الرجل يطيل السفر أشعث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا ربي يا ربي ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب له Then Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم gave the example of a man who have journeyed far is disheveled and dusty and who spreads out his hand to the sky saying O Lord, O Lord while his food is haram, his drink is haram and his clothing is haram and he has been nourished with haram so how can he or his supplication be answered and here rasulullah is giving us an example of a person and he give is giving us his state he's giving us several descriptions the first one is that he is journeying he is traveling as a matter of fact he is traveling far away yutilu safar yani this is a long journey which means that he has journeyed far far away and this is one of the reasons or the means and this is one of the places being on a journey while traveling is a place of dua mustajab so this is something that we learn from this hadith yani while you are traveling while you are journeying this is an opportunity to make a lot of dua to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala because the dua made while you are journeying is closer to be answered by Allah Azza wa Jal. This is an opportunity of dua al-mustajab. As a matter of fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith that is narrated by Abu Huraira, he said, thalathu da'awatin mustajabatun la shakka feehin. And I'll skip the Arabic text in the interest of time. He alayhi salatu wa sallam says, three supplications are answered without a doubt. SubhanAllah. The supplication of someone who is oppressed. That's one example. And may Allah bestow upon you, brother, I see that you are taking notes. Barakallahu feek. This is actually a good sign. May Allah reward you. 
The first example of a dua al mustajab is the supplication of the person who has been oppressed. Somebody who has been oppressed, his dua is mustajab by Allah Azza wa Jal. The second one is the supplication of someone on a journey. Wahua musafir. The third one is the supplication. People make dua against their children. And be careful that that might be actually mustajab. May Allah Azza wa Jal may very well answer that. So this is an example of a dua al-mustajab. And also one of them is while you are journeying. So this is something a lot of people, by the way, are, are not aware of it. And they miss it. They journey a lot. They travel a lot. Some people, as a matter of fact, by their profession, they travel a lot. And we should be always may, be, be careful about uh, may, you know, benefiting from that opportunity to make dua to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. The second, or actually before that, also, the fact that he said, Yutilu safar and he is journeying far away, which means that he are far away from home. That he is journeyed, uh, you know, this also means that, uh, that, you know, that he is feeling foreign. He is feeling, you know, obviously far away from his home. And in it is the need that you are not at home when you actually feel, strong, you feel stronger, right? When you are within your family and in your home, you feel more safe. You, are, you feel more sufficient, right? And, and, and you have what you need. While you are traveling so far away from your family, it means that you are weak. You are in need right you are uh, in a dire need and uh, you know you know, are in a foreign state um, and all, you know sometimes people actually travel and they sometimes travel this far away because they are uh, after the income to make income and you know be, be able to establish or support themselves and sustain themselves and their families so all of this is actually we can infer this from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu That's the first one. Then he gave us another a, a, a description that he is de-shuffled and dusty. You know what the de-shuffled is? Yani his hair is, you know, is not combed, is not in a proper way. Yani out of this travel, obviously they used to travel throughout the land and in the desert. So his hair is everywhere and is dusty, which means that he is not a, in, a, in a neat way right so all of this is also shows humility and it shows need and showing the need of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and by the way these two attributes are something that Allah azza wa jal likes to see from his servant when you show need and when you have a need from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and these are also from adab dua from adab dua you don't put your best garments on yourself and showing that you are self-sufficient and you have everything that you need and then you raise your hand toward Allah Azza wa Jal. When you want to make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, you should show need to him. You don't show him self-sufficiency or that, oh Allah, I ask you of this, but if you don't answer that I have what I need. That's not the way to make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. You should actually show him need and show humility. As a matter of fact, some of our righteous predecessors if they want to make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, they used to specifically choose the worn out garments. They put them, not the best garments, but the, the most worn out garments. And they don't actually decorate themselves. And they go in private and they make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal because this is closer to being uh, answered by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And this also, when you actually wear, you, you know, you put on the worn out garments, right? This is actually, you're pushing yourself away from arrogance and showing off in front of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and you show humility and need and dire need to Allah azza wa jal. Then he mentioned a third thing that yamuddu yadayhi ila sama that he actually uh, raises his hand uh, toward the sky. And this is also from adab al-du'a that you raise your hand and this is actually from the sunnah in making the dua to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala you raise your hand and then he says uh, ya rabbi ya rabbi and in this repetition you say ya rabbi ya rabb also it indicates that you are in a dire need that you have a need from Allah azza wa jal and you uh, show humility to Allah azza wa jal and you mention this attribute of Allah azza wa jal which is a rububiyya lordship Notice he didn't say, Ya ilahi, Ya ilahi. He said, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabb. So there is a mention of a Rabb or a Rububiyya, right? Which is the Lordship of Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And why is that? Why when we make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, we, we say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, like this person is saying in here. When you make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, it means you want something from Him, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. 
When Allah Azza wa Jal provides you with what you want, this is the effect of what? Of the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because when you say Allah is the Lord, it means that He is the Creator, He is the, man he is the one who manages all affairs, He is the one Razzaq, He is the one who gives and sustains and provides provision. This is the effect of the Lordship of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the Rabb of all humanity. The believer and the non-believer. And that's why he gives subhanahu wa ta'ala the believer, al-Muslim or al-Mu'min, as well as he gives the non-Muslim, al-Mushrik or al-Kafir, even the one who is Kafir, billah tabaraka wa ta'ala. This is the effect of his rububiyya subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why answering the dua is the effect of the rububiyya of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And like I said, Allah azza wa jal is the Rabb of everybody, Muslim and the non-Muslim. And he is the Rabb of al-Mushrik, of, of the Christian, of the Jew. Even Allah Azza wa Jal answered the, uh, uh, what, uh, what Iblis asked of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. He asked Allah Azza wa Jal, قَالَ فَأَنْظِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Oh Allah, give me the opportunity until they get resurrected. So I whisper to them and I you know, decorate the evil things for the son of Adam. What did Allah Azza wa Jal say? This is something that Iblis, he asked the devil, or the evil one, he asked Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, give me until they are resurrected. Allah Azza wa Jal says, he answered his, his asking, and he gave, he granted him what he wished for. He said, You have been granted that, and you will be, you will live until they are resurrected. So Allah Azza wa Jal answered Jib uh, Iblis, and likewise he answered those who are disbelieving in Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, because Rizqullah, is the effect of his rububiyya to his servants. He gives everything. And he is the one who is al-qayyum subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani he sustains everything in this universe with what it needs to be able to live and uh, to carry on. طيب. He says, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabb. So this is, we said, this is also one of the adab al-du'a uh, to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And by the way, one of the things that we notice is that the vast majority and you, when you read through the Qur'an, pay attention to that. The vast majority, the vast majority, maybe except from an instance or two, no more, in the whole Qur'an, whenever there is a dua that is mentioned in, in, in the Qur'an, it always came with preceded by Rabbana, Rabbi. Check this out. Whenever you see a dua in the Qur'an, you will see that it is preceded by the use of the word Rabb. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا right every every time there is a dua it is preceded by يا رب so this is actually from آداب الدعاء طيب after that after he mentioned of all of this and all of these are reasons يعني traveling far journeying being in a not in a state that is not very neat garments and your st the state of your hair and raising your hand toward the sky and saying ya rabbi ya rabb all of these are things means and asbab for the dua to be answered yet after he did all of this then rasulullah sallallahu he says wa mat'amuhu min haram yani he he eats from that which is haram which is unlawful and his drink is from that which is unlawful. And his garments, what he wears, is from that which is unlawful. And he is nourishing himself, or he nourished himself from that which is unlawful. And then Rasulullah said, فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ How can that person be answered? How can his dua be answered? Yani it is something that is yani inconceivable. It is far from being answered by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Although you notice that he did all of this, he is in a state of traveling. He is, he is in, in a state, in a lot of states, and he did some of the things that are from adab al-du'a, that should make that du'a be accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. But when he was eating from that which is haram, and drinking from haram, and wearing from haram, and he nourished himself from that which is haram, that made his du'a far away from being answered by Allah Azza wa Jal. Yani this invalidated his du'a, which is the du'a to Allah 
tabaraka wa ta'ala. This shows us how of a great connection. How if you want your dua to be answered by Allah Azza wa Jal, then make sure that every that you actually wearing that which is halal, eating from that which is halal, drinking from that which is halal, nourishing yourself and your family from that which is halal. And when we say that which is halal or tayyib, it means what? It means that it is tayyib in itself. Yani you eat that which is halal, allowed to eat. And that is purchased from money that was earned in a halal way. Somebody who offers offers an uthiyah to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now he brings a goat and slaughters it in the right way and everything according to the Sharia, right? But he actually stole it. <laughs> he stole that goat. Is that accepted? Is that uthiyah tayyib? It's not tayyib. Somebody who stole or a thief stole from somebody money and then he gives zakat out of it. Is that accepted? So it has to be tayyib in itself and it has to be earned from money, from income, from sources that are tayyib, legal and lawful. Two things. When this person is eating from that which is haram, then how can his dua be? So to see the effect of that uh, eating from haram and drinking from haram, upon the acceptance of a dua. A lot of people, by the way, I've heard it myself, a lot of people come and say, brother, how come that I make a lot of dua? I invoke Allah Azza wa a lot, then yet at the same time, I feel that my dua is not answered. The first thing that you should look into, where are you eating from? What are you eating from? And what you are drinking from and your family? What are you putting in the stomach, in the mouth and the stomach of your, of your family? What are you filling it with? What are you nourishing yourself and your family with? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiyallahu anhuma, a great sahabi. He once came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ud'u Allah li an akuna mujabad da'wa. Yani Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make dua for me to Allah azza wa jal to make me mujabad da'wa, yani to make my dua always answered. What did he say? Alayhi salatu He didn't just make a dua to Allah. Said, oh, Ya Allah, answer, always answer the dua of Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas. He said, Ya Sa'd, Atib mat'amak, takun mustajab al da'wah. Make sure that what you eat, al mat'am, atib, yani make it tayyib. Atib mat'amak, make sure that everything that you eat, that your ta'am is tayyib and you will be mustajab al da'wah and your dua will be mustajab will be answered by Allah azza wa jal look at how he alayhi salatu was salam guided Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas and from this hadith we learn that there is a great connection and eating from halal is a great cause sabab a great sabab for your dua to be mustajab by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala it is a great sabab lil ijaba of your dua from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so somebody who actually eats from haram and eats from or drink from haram and wear from haram and then he make a lot of dua like this person. Rasulullah How can that be person that person dua be, be answered? Yani it is far fetched. It is something that is inconceivable. Yani Rasulullah did not think that his dua will be will be mustajab. This actually should make every Muslim fearful when you hear this. Ibad Allah, myself and yourself, we are servants of Allah Azza wa Jal. We, don't, we are actually in need of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. We are powerless. Everything that we have in this life, every bounty, every ni'mah that we have is from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we are so self-insufficient. And we have a dire need to, from Allah Azza to, to, to be provided by Allah Azza wa Jal, who is al al Hamid, who is the self-sufficient. And we have a need to make dua Allah, to dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal day and night to give us and make, give us rizq. Allahumma rizqna. Everything in this life is rizq from Allah Azza wa Jal. When you know that there is this, this eating from haram is something that will make your dua unanswered by Allah Azza wa Jal. It should make me fearful. And it should make every Muslim fearful. Because I have a need for dua. And I want that dua to be answered because I, I am in such a need to Allah Azza wa Jal, my Lord. 
then this is a great, this should make me very fearful and very, very careful about what I eat and what I drink and make sure that it is all tayyib. If this person who did all of the adab uh, dua that the things that should make his dua answered, yet when he ate from haram, Rasulullah that his dua, it is far-fetched from answered, then it should make me very fearful and make sure that everything that I eat and drink and everything that I say is from a tayyib that pleases Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And like I said, the benefit of this dua, of, I'm sorry, of this hadith is also we learn a lot of adab dua namely to raise our hands to Allah Azza wa Jal. Raising the hand is from adab dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you are in a dire need, as a matter of fact, the sunnah is to actually raise your hands so much. You stretch them. You stretch your arms toward the, toward the sky, whether you actually your palm are facing the sky or you actually, it has been narrated that the, uh, the, the, uh, the outside of your, of your palm is facing the, uh, the, the sky. This is when you are in a dire need, when you have a dire need uh, uh, from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, then it is legislated that you raise your hand so much. But the vast majority of the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in such a way that he would put his hands in the position as if, you know, the needy person who needs, you know, sadaqah or who needs help, you know, how they put their hand and then people put their, the, what, you know, whatever they want to give them in their hands. This is like somebody who is asking for a sadaqah. Uh, this is the, the, the shape of the raising the hand in the vast majority of the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, including his dua on Jabal Arafah. طيب. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in the hadith that, uh, narrated, that is narrated by Salman al-Farisi, who narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, indeed Allah is modest and generous when a man raises his hands to him raises his hands to him, he feels too shy to return them to him empty and rejected. Because this is from Adab uh, al-Dua, uh, uh, when you actually make dua to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So we end, we summarize this, that there are a lot of Adab for the dua, and the person who wants to make dua to Allah azza wa jal should strive and should try his best or her best to actually do as much of this Adab al-Dua, yani try to actually, when you make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, to actually uh, practice these adab uh, dua so that they are, it is closer to being answered by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And like I said, this is an example of a dua, but the same thing applies to a salah, to a zakah, to a sawm, and the rest of the ibadat, and the rest of the deeds. You do something good, you, good, you are good to somebody else, also this applies to, that, to, to it. Uh, all of the deeds should be tayyib, because Allah Azza wa Jal only accept that which is tayyib. So the person who is not is careless about where his income is coming from and what he's feeding himself and his families, then he is threatened and he should be actually warned by this hadith that his dua or her dua might as well not be answered by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this is from the great effect of eating and living out of that which is, which is tayyib. Now, like I said, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ How can that, that person's supplication be answered? So it is highly unlikely. Yet, it may be answered. We say in certain circumstances, that doesn't mean that it will never ever be answered. It may be answered. And like I said, Allah Azza wa Jal may answer the dua of the mushrik, may answer the dua of the non-Muslim. Uh, uh, those who have not believed in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and this is especially in the cases of a dire need when a person is a di in a dire need or is oppressed or it, it comes into the heart of that person the need from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala even if he or she is a mushrik or a non-muslim then Allah azza wa jal may answer their dua for this dire need that has been established in their heart, like Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah Al-Ankabut, فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ And when they embark on a ship, they invoke Allah making their faith pure for Him only. But when He brings them safely to land, what do they do? Behold, they give a share of their worship to others. يعني they're, they're مشركين. But when they were in a dire need and about to die, 
they sincerely make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal answer their dua. So this is one of the cases where the person is in a dire need uh, uh, to Allah Azza wa Jal, or if the person is uh, accompanied or somebody who is a, uh, whom Allah Azza wa Jal will answer their dua, intercede on their behalf, and Allah Azza wa Jal allow that, then their dua may be answered. Or somebody who is mujabid da'wah may actually, we say, we call it ta'meen. Yani he says, yani a person who may be eating from that which is haram, make dua, and somebody who is righteous says ameen. So Allah Azza wa Jal may answer their dua because of the ameen of that righteous person, or that uh, person whom Allah Azza wa Jal will answer their dua. This concludes the explanation of this hadith, and this is what Allah Azza wa Jal allowed me and gave me the tawfiq to actually say uh, with respect to this hadith, and this is actually a quick commentary if you wish, otherwise this hadith deserves even more than that, but this is in a quick uh, commentary on this hadith, this is what Allah Azza wa Jal gave me the tawfiq, whatever I have said correctly, it is tawfiq from Allah Azza wa Jal, and if I erred, then it is from me and from a shaitan and I seek refuge in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala from any of that. Now, just in a minute or two, I just wanted to ma mention a few quick points just to emphasize the few points that I want everybody to take away from this hadith. Uh, like we said, this hadith shows that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who is self-sufficient, who is al-ghani and he is the one who gives. And out of being self-sufficient, he does not accept, except that which is tayyib. Yani somebody who per performs a prayer that is not tayyib, Allah Azza wa is not in need of it. He is self-sufficient. He doesn't need that prayer. Somebody who gives a zakat that is not tayyib, from, from money that is not tayyib, Allah Azza wa does not need it. He is tayyib. He would not, he's self-sufficient. He doesn't need it. That's why he only accepts that which is tayyib because he is ghani. He is, he is self-sufficient and he is not in need of any good deed of any person. Also, from what we learn from this hadith, that even the messengers and the prophets are ordered and prohibited. Amara, bima amara bihil mursaleen. Yani, we were ordered, the believers were ordered like the messengers were ordered. So they, they are ordered and they are prohibited and they are the best people uh, with their worship toward Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Likewise, al mu'mineen are also ordered and prohibited. They, are, they, uh, they were addressed by orders from Allah Azza wa Jal, and they are prohibited from certain things. And the best of the people and the ones with the most complete faith are the ones who are more obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, we also mentioned, and this is a nice thing, that Allah Azza wa, or Rasulullah Sallallahu is telling us that we are ordered, Allah Azza wa Jal is ordering us like He ordered the Rusul to encourage us and to praise us and to give us an incentive to actually submit and obey to that. Because like the messengers, we are like them. Uh, also from, uh, from this hadith, we also learn something quite important. If you actually uh, take the two ayat, the ayah of Surah Al-Mu'mineen and the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, if you take them together, if you take them to both of them uh, together, you will actually end up or understanding that true thankfulness, truly being grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal is to actually do the good deeds. Notice this. In the ayah of Surah Al-Mu'mineen, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhal rusulu, kulu min al-tayyibati wa amalu salihah. Eat from that which is tayyib and do good deeds. In the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, he is addressing subhanahu wa ta'ala the believers. He said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum. Washkuru lillah. You notice the first part of the two ayat are similar. Ya ayyuhal rusulu kulu min tayyibat. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum. In the first ayah he said, Wa'amalu tayyiba. In the second ayah he said, Washkuru lillah. So this means what? Shukur lillah is what? is wa'malu tayyibah. Washkuru lillah. How do we make shukr? How, do we are, how are we truly grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal? A lot of people are only grateful by their tongue. But that's not enough. Shukr is by doing the good deeds. Wa'malu salihah. Washkuru lillah wa'malu salihah. It means that being truly thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal, truly th being thankful is to actually do the good deeds, submit to his orders, being truly grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal for the wealth that he gave you is to actually give zakat out. 
Some people, and I've seen it by the way, they're always thankful, being thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal with the tongue. When it comes to giving the zakat, but this is my money, hard earned money. How are you being thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal if you don't give the zakat? Being truly gr grateful for the money and the wealth is to actually give the zakat that Allah Azza wa Jal made it mandatory upon you. So this is actually the true shukr, is al-amal al-salih. Um, we also learn from this hadith, and this is the last thing, is that from the means, al-asbab, the ijabat al-du'a, that the du'a is answered by Allah Azza wa Jal, is to call upon him by his rububiyya. You say, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, ruzuqni, Ya Rabb, ihdini, Ya Rabb, uh, wafiqni, Right? Ya Razzaq Rzuqni, etc., etc. Ya Rahman Rahamni, right? So you address Allah Azza wa Jal by His Rububiyya or by the names that imply His Lordship Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And in this hadith is the great and serious warning against that which is haram. Eating from that which is haram, drinking from that which is haram, living off of that which is haram. So we get we ought to actually heed this warning from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and stick to that which is tayyib and halal. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give me and you tawfiq to do that. Okay. Uh, I want to open the opportunity for any questions or comments on this hadith. Uh, otherwise, uh, the cookies are eagerly waiting for you. Tfadal. Nice to meet you, brother. I know you. <laughs> Barakallah uh, I got knowledge from this hadith. Alhamdulillah. As part of the hadith, al-tayyib uh, from the opposite meaning, al-khabith. Al-khabith. Al-tayyib and al-khabith. Naam. But in the last part of the hadith, you have mentioned the ayah also. There is ayah tayyibah. Naam. Uh, which is halal that was earned through halal means so halal two things and this is something that a lot of people miss tayyib halal tayyib is the one that is tayyib in itself yani something that you can eat you're eating from something that we can allow we are allowed to eat that was earned through a halal means الخبيث من هذه الآية طيبات الحلال وبعد ذلك ذكر الرجل يعني مطعمه حرام يعني من هذا contradiction contradiction meaning we get the knowledge it's not a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. This ayah was mentioned because Rasulullah is telling us that this is what Allah Azza wa Jal is ordering us to do. You notice that in the hadith, Rasulullah is telling us that Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered you, the believers, like he ordered the Mursaleen with the same orders. He ordered the Mursaleen to eat which, with only that, uh, that which is only halal and tayyib. And likewise, the believers were ordered with the same thing. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum. Then he's giving us an example of a person who is eating from haram and how that affects the answering of his dua. That his dua will not be answered because he's eating from the haram and drinking from haram. That actually uh, prevents and, and uh, deprives that person for that from his dua being answered by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Now, so it's not a contradiction. No, I, uh, do not uh, um, tell that it is contradiction, but uh, the meaning can be uh, get from the opposite. Now, from the tayyib in the first part, no. al khabith. No. Then we can compare no. what, what is, which is tayyib and which, which is khabith. No. In, in the second part, with the halal, with the haram, no. then we can... No. Ahsan, no. Barakallah. No. I am. No. No. Any other questions? Fadal. So in the last line, it says, Mustajab means like, it will be answered. 
فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ أَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ It means that how can he be answered? يعني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is, is actually uh, saying that it will, his dua will, it is far-fetched that his dua will be answered. يعني highly unlikely that it will be answered. So this is not that it will be answered, it actually will not be answered. فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ How can that person be answered? يعني it is a negation of being answered. نعم. Dua al-mustajab, yes. So the, the dua of the parents toward their children, the dua of the person while journeying, and the dua uh, uh, of the person, uh, what was the third one? We said, uh, so the dua of uh, while journeying, the dua of the parents. Oppressed? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Zakallah khair. The one, the dua of the one who is oppressed. Barakallah khair, Zakallah khair, naam. Yani al-mazloom, dua al-mazloom. Who, who, what, the one whose dhulm was, uh, he was affected by dhulm. Naam, dua al mazlum ahsanat. Naam. Any other questions? Okay, I see. Tayyip, tafadal. Quick one. Salaam wa rahmatullah. Barakallah shaykh. Um, the word khubit. Naam. Does it uh, have some kind of link with the dua that we say when we enter the bathroom? Yes. So, uh, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khabaith. Right. Al Khubith wal Khabaith in that dua is referring to uh, those uh, jinn who actually live in those dirty places. So you are seeking refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from them, from any harm that uh, they may inflict on, on you. Now, because this is where they live. Al Khubith wal Khabaith are those jinn who live in the uh, restrooms in the dirty places. Now, wa yak barakallah fi. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wassalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh